Last time on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I don't know if I have the guts to make the choice. I will say B, South Dakota is my final answer. You're right for $32,000. I know the final answer is D, Rhode Island. Just $164,000. Four away from a million, no lifelines left, and if you miss here, you lose $32,000. Who is the heroine of Shakespeare's Twelfth Night? It's a lot of money, but Regis, my goal was $32,000. I'm going to take a chance. Good for you. I'm going to say A, Olivia. Want to make it your final answer? Final answer. It was Viola. Now, join us from New York for night 73 of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. everybody thank you hello again and welcome to thursday night at who wants to be a millionaire well as you just saw we all loved tracy tariska a wonderful gutsy school teacher who took a chance but missed the 125 thousand dollar question and left here with 32 thousand dollars and we have another gutsy contestant matt murray from los angeles who went all the way he deduced the heck out of the 64 thousand dollar question got it right and so he is back and in that chair and going for $125,000. Good evening, Dr. Philbin. Nice to see you, Matt. Uh, enjoying yourself here in New York City? We're having a ball. Yeah? yeah got out with the kids uh, this morning. Got some fresh air on top of the uh, Empire State Building. Now, uh, you and your wife, Cynthia, have uh, two little ones, and you left them uh, with a babysitter for a lot of hours. It was the longest, uh, longest we've ever been without them, actually. And uh, it was a little bit nerve-wracking, but we have a, a great babysitter and great references. And actually, we're a little bit more relaxed now because uh, sure. uh, we feel like they're in good hands. Sure, absolutely. Did uh, they take it any of the sites? Just this morning, uh, last night when we got back, uh, little boy uh, Evan was uh, bouncing off the walls uh, uh, both from excitement that we were on the show and I think from a half a bottle of apple juice. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and the, the little girl, Aislin, is, uh, her six-month birthday is tomorrow, and uh, right. she was asleep. Oh, well, <laughs> sure. Little guy get up to the Empire State Building? Yeah, he loved it. Oh, he wanted to know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> One of those houses down there. <laughs> All right, Matt, you have won $64,000. you are just four questions away from winning $1 million. Mm -hmm. You still have two of your lifelines to help. 50-50, and you can phone a friend. So, um, kind of exciting right now. Four away from a million. You ready to go here? Take them one at a time. Regis. All right, good enough. Shall we do it, audience? Let's play. All right, let's go. Who wants to be a millionaire? For $125,000, which of the following U.S. presidents was also Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives? Gerald R. Ford, Woodrow Wilson, Lyndon B. Johnson, James K. Polk. All good men. Mm -hmm. I had an initial uh, instinct that hit me. Pretty sure I'm right on this. Uh, Spiro Agnew left office in the Nixon administration. Yeah. Well, something like taxes or something? I don't know. But uh, he was replaced by the Speaker of the House, as far as I know, or he was chosen, if memory serves, by Nixon to be a vice president. And so when Nixon left office, uh, Ford had the uh, daunting task of being uh, mending the country a little bit, mm -hmm. keeping us going. So that's where my mind is right now. Uh, it's a question of whether or not I want to further validate this. You know. With your two lifelines. Yeah, I know. I don't want to really leave them on the table. Then again, I don't know if we had a Republican Congress majority in 1972, 68. 
So I know the succession, I don't really know uh, for certain. Mm -hmm. So for clarity, and to get some more information, we're going to do a lifeline. We're going we're gonna to do the 50-50. Narrow it down to two. Yeah. Let's Maybe do that. help me out. All right. Computer, please take away two of the wrong answers, leaving Matt one wrong answer and the correct one. I don't think we had a Republican House of Representatives then. I think that the uh, Newt Gingrich contract with America was uh, signaling in the return of a Republican dominance. And I think that that dominance in the House might, might not have, might have been from 60 on in 20 years or so. So what do you think, Matt? Just between us, what are you gonna do? I'll phone a friend. No kidding. Who do you want to call? Mm. I think the only guy I can call on this one that would know whether or not there was a Republican majority is my father-in-law. What's his name? Dean. Dean. Mm -hmm. All right, our friends at AT&T will get the father-in-law Dean on the line. We'll see if he knows. Hello, Dean. Yes. Hi, Regis Philbin here from ABC's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Hi, Regis. How are you? All righty. Good. We've been sitting here pondering with Matt, and we figured out that he needs your help. I know you can't see him right now, but he's won 64000 going for 125000 Right. He's going to come on the line and give you a question and two possible answers. Okay. One of them's the right one, okay? Right. All right, so you're going to hear Matt in a second. Matt, you've got 30 seconds, and they start right now. Which of the following U.S. presidents was also Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives? Was it Gerald Ford or James Polk? Was there a Republican quorum in 1970? Uh, Gerald Ford is my guess, Matt. How much? 80%. But that would seem rather obvious, wouldn't it? Yeah, I know. Do you think there was a Republican majority then? What, what about the Gingrich? No, that's All the lifelines are gone, but he did say 80% for uh, Ford. Here's my father. That's what I hear, yeah. <laughs> Seemed like a nice guy. Yeah, he's, he's up on most of this. I'll bet the kids are wondering where you are. Let's go with Gerald R. Ford. I'll make it my final answer. I'll gamble a little. You said final answer. Oh my gosh, it's James K. I was there. Oh boy, after all that, it was James K. Polk. I'm sorry, Matt. I really am. That's all right. But it was a lot of fun no, having you here on the show. And here it is for 32,000. Thanks a lot. Good luck to you, baby. Too bad, huh? Well, according to my screen, James Polk was the Speaker of the House from 1835 to 1839, and Gerald Ford was a congressman, but never Speaker of the House. Right now, we've got 10 new contestants ready to go. Who are they tonight? Let's find out. They are Bill Fritz, Bel Air, Maryland, Joe Trina, Gilroy, California, Karen Williams, South Beloit, Illinois, Ryan Smith, Madison, Wisconsin, Jason Sturdivant, Statesboro, Georgia. Bill Morrissey, Bellbrook, Ohio. Joshua Barenbaum, Brooklyn, New York. Nicholas Carbo, Birmingham, Michigan. John Costco, Verona, New Jersey. And Rob Haskin, Montclair, New Jersey. All right, contestants, here's how it works. In a moment, a question and four answers will appear on your screens. The one who puts those answers in the correct order in the fastest time will be our next player. Audience, we need complete silence here. Thank you. Here comes the question. Put these novels in the order in which they were first published 
starting with the earliest. The Perfect Storm, The Satanic Verses, Timeline, The Celestine Prophecy. Okay, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the earliest, and it was the Satanic Verses. Then the Celestine Prophecy, then the Perfect Storm. Timeline was the last one. Let's see who got it right of the fast, the only one, Joe Trela. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Good luck.